just about, just about GMPS. Yes. Good evening. Good evening. <laughs> Hello. Welcome to the proceedings of the Grand Rapids Board of Education. It is Monday, October 21st. Please jo rise and join me in saying the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Mr. Ross has an excused absence tonight, so Ms. Slade is filling in for him. Can you please take the roll? Certainly can. Slade, here. Dr. Baker? Here. Mr. LeGrand? Here. Reverend Matias? Here. Reverend Moody? Mr. O'Connor? Here. Dr. Randalls? Here. President Fowle? Present. Thank you. Do I have a motion to approve the agenda? So moved. Support? Support. Thank you. And uh, we are on to our celebrations. Do. Thank you. I think the first celebration that I have, Madam President, is in the image, and I'm going to ask Mel Atkins to come up. Thank you. Good evening, uh, Madam President, um, Superintendent Neal, board members. Today, um, I have, I want to introduce In the Image. It's a, it's a SHU program, stands for Shoes Helping Our Elementary Students. It's been serving our GRPS elementary students for 16 years now. 16 years. In the last two years alone, um, the In the Image and Jay Starkey has provided 7,381 free pair of shoes to our students. Their dedication towards the families of GRPS it goes above and beyond. Um, with me today, I have the Executive Director of In the Image, Jay Starkey. Thank you all for letting me be here. Uh, yeah, In the Image, I mean, we, we're here to serve this community, but especially through our shoes program. Um, our goal this year was about 10,000 pairs of shoes. We invited over 13,000 children to take part in it. And GRPS is the center of that, of that program. This year also, we, uh, we, we formed a partnership with a local church, St. Thomas the Apostle, and they sponsored all of the shoes for Congress Elementary School this year. And we're hoping to do that more often um, because I think it was an amazing program. It got the church involved with the school and the kids got to get the shoes on their turf, not coming to us and, and, and with the big lines and everything. So we're committed to growing this program with uh, Grand Rapids. Last year, we invited every single school, elementary school, to the program, when before it was a little more than half. Um, so we're committed, and as well as I know that GRPS is committed to us, too. So I want to say thank you and, and for letting me be here and for just hearing a little bit about our program. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Where on earth do you get 10,000 pairs of shoes from? <laughs> well, yeah, we, we buy them. Uh, we've got a couple different partners. Um, one is a, a kind of a direct manufacturer direct. The other one is literally through our Kmart. I'm sorry, through our Kmart Kmart stores. Okay. Uh, we go do the whole district. They drove, drive all the way down to Illinois to get the shoes sometimes, um, and we get them for between ten and thirteen dollars for a pair of shoes. Okay. So out of we spend about a hundred thousand dollars on the program. Our annual budget's about six hundred thousand. Wow. So it's a sixth of our budget um, for two weeks of work. Even though throughout the school year, we'll give away well over 2,000 pairs of shoes. Hmm. Wow. That's great. This is a good time to do your plug to ask for donations <laughs> right. because yeah. we give That's donations. Cool. Yeah. So yeah. you're on TV. So I would ask that you do that. Well, <laughs> in the image, we do things differently. Uh, everything we do is free. Yeah. We don't charge for anything we do. We serve 900 families a week. Mm -hmm. In order to make sure that we keep everything free, in order to make sure that we serve all these children in the schools that, that need the help, the families need help. We need, we need the community's help. That's we can't do it without the community. We can't do it without the people in this room. Um, we're, we're just here to serve. That's all there is to it. In the community, some people think it's four blocks around your building. Mm -hmm. I think it's as far as you can touch. And when we interlock arms, it touches it even further. So we're, uh, we're committed to that. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah, I, 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 know, I know Jay. And, and I know a lot of, for example, a lot of the shoes definitely affects uh, directly our our community in the Burton area and uh, and not only that but a lot of the clothing a lot of the furniture because we refer a lot of folks to you that are really uh, definitely in need so it's not just that they're asking because they want but they're asking because they need and so we definitely appreciate the fact that you're you're there 
for nothing, and and often that's what our families have to give nothing, and so it definitely fills the gap. Well, thank you, John. And and as you know, I mean, we're, we're there for everything, mm -hmm. but again, it takes support, but also it takes mutual support. We get a lot of your people that come and volunteer also, mm -hmm. so it's a way for students and for families and for administration to give back and come and see what's going on in your communities because we're a direct yeah. reflection of that. Yeah. One last thing, the uh, Mastodon tooth. <laughs> yeah. Was there a note in there? I was when I read that uh, <laughs> the article in the newspaper, <laughs> and um, somebody there gave him a Mastodon tooth. Truth and something else. <laughs> something, yeah. yeah, it was. It, what, what's was crazy it about that is marked we marked or something. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Ten thousand dollars. It, it was. It, it was a, no. It was. Yeah. A, it was a ten. It was actually a twelve to fifteen thousand year old mastodon. Tube. Oh, okay. Yeah. But it was in a tub with clothes, and we dumped out the tub, and it came out, <laughs> and the molar was broken in half, which I thought was way cool. Yeah. But then there was also like part of a tusk or something else. Yeah. Well, we didn't know what to do with it. We didn't know if it was a joke, whatever it was, and we called the public museum, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. we ended up donating it to the public museum, just giving it to them. Mm -hmm. And they um, are going to take it around to different schools now, so children can actually touch it mm -hmm. and feel it, wow. and, and see what a twelve to fifteen thousand year old mastodon yeah. tooth looks like. The so, people it's nuts. It's, I, and, and it, what it, we think it's from a family that died, and, and they just cleaned out the house. But this went as far as in the UK. It was it was kind of went international. I, in one, I was at a golf course right after this all happened, and I was doing an, e an interview with Good Morning America people and CBS Radio. It was so cool. Like, hey, you got go nope I'm doing interviews <laughs> so it, it was really cool for us but even more I think it's gonna be cool for the kids yeah. mm -hmm. exactly mm -hmm. it's great yeah. thank you Mr. Staff it's a great organization mm -hmm. uh, still don't have our student representatives so we can move on to public comment uh, any public I have not comment received for board any agenda items cards all right reports secretary's report secretary's report the board is invited to the NAACP's Freedom Fund Leadership Rally on Saturday, October 26th, 6, excuse me, at Brown Hutcherson Ministries, which is located at 618 Jefferson Avenue Southeast from 5 to 7 p.m. The event's theme is Preparing Tomorrow's Leaders Today. Please respond to the evite sent to you to confirm your reservation. That's uh, Saturday, October 26th. Mark your calendar. That's this Saturday. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Grand Rapids Urban League, second announcement, the board is invited to attend the Grand Rapids Urban League's 70th anniversary gala on Friday, November 1 at the Amway Grand Plaza Hotel at 187 Monroe Avenue Northwest, starting at 6. The event's theme is a new era of transformation presented by Spectrum Health. Please provide your RSVP to Julie and hope to see you all there. That's Thank the end you. of my report. Thank you, Ms. Slade. Uh, superintendent's report. Um, I would ask Mel Atkins to come up again and share about our parent university. Mel, uh, Emmanuel Armstrong is going to join Mel. Yeah, we are going to have just a, a, a short PowerPoint. Okay. Okay. Parent University was, uh, was really an idea that birthed um, out of a, one of the community meetings. Um, Believe to Become um, was, holds these neighborhood engagement meetings. And two years ago, what happened was we said, parents, what do you want for your children? You know, you know, we asked that question, you know, what do you, what do you want? Instead of telling them what they want, or maybe, or telling them what we have to offer, what do you want? And out of this, we, they said classes, workshops, how to maneuver, maneuver the system. And what, so a subcommittee formed, and two years later today, and this is what came out of was Parent University. So Parent University is a collaborative um, um, approach to be, um, help parents become full partners in their child's education. It's workshops, modules, classes. I mean, it's just truly a, a, a co-partnership um, with GRPS and Believe to Become. Um, and I will say later we, we launched it this year um, with the marketing um, in September. Our first classes were offered October 2nd, so we're a few weeks into it, and then we're going to tell you some of, some of the results of it too. So we're excited. It, it's, it's taken um, a couple years to get here, but it's, it's one of the um, a national model, I believe, in, 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 in partnering with parents. 
questions that we had to answer was why. Uh, we looked at what we felt was um, trying to uh, define what parental engagement is. And instead of us trying to come up with that definition, we allow parents to give us what their idea of parental engagement is. Um, and so we just have these three points here that we like to highlight. Um, the first one being that every student has the potential uh, to achieve academic success not based on your zip code, not based on your parents' level of education, but just based on you being a student. Every single student that we serve has that potential. Also, every parent has the potential to contribute to their child's success. We know that parents will um, contribute at different levels, but we're saying through this, which is one venue that we, we think we've uh, done a pretty good job with, is that parents can use this to be um, you know, that, that type of person to contribute. And we all understand this, that all parents of Grand Rapids Public Schools students, um, parents want their children to succeed at the highest level possible. And we understand that that's our job to do so. So for Parent University, we have uh, four big buckets, if you will. Uh, the first one being effective parenting. Um, underneath um, each bucket, you have different offerings. Um, just a few classes to highlight under effective parenting are you have uh, believed to become um, baby scholars, um, infant scholars, toddlers. Um, we have a class that's being taught tomorrow night at Gerald R. Ford Academic Center, which is becoming your child's uh, best advocate. How do we teach? How do we teach parents to become their child's? Um, other buckets that we have, navigating the educational system um, and talking about the GRPS academic plan. Uh, we have uh, members of which we call facilitators that will teach this class. Uh, we'll be partnering with the Grand Rapids Public School Library um, to, to uh, work on different things. And we also have classes under here uh, that are highlighted and taught by Khan Academy. Uh, personal growth and development. Um, this is a class that we this, this is a bucket that we highlight where you have um, people like our deputy superintendent teaching classes. Larry Johnson currently teaches two classes in Parent University for the fall, one being gang consciousness, and the, um, the second one is um, take action against bullying, which are um, issues that are real to our community. Um, and the last bucket is the fun one. This is one I suggest everybody to sign up for health and wellness. And uh, this w is where we highlight our partnership with the YMCA. And we have Zumba classes. Uh, we have kickboxing classes. Um, in the winter, we're going to offer um, get off uh, your couch to 5K and also yoga classes. So these are all classes that you can become active. You can learn um, healthy um, lifestyles, um, nutrition, and exercise. So when we... We're talking with parents. We we came up with an idea. They can came, parents came with the idea of how can we recognize parents. And so I so, said, uh, what are what would attract a parent? What would you need? And some of them said GEDs, um, college credit, um, workforce development are some options. But then this parent track came out too. And on the parent track, we want to say some of our parent leaders, um, some of them um, you can you can lead a class. You know, we know with some, with some training. But out of it, I want to highlight today is parent ambassadors. Parent ambassadors are, we have right now, we've had a total of 35 parents that went through a special training. And now, so instead of saying me, you know, um, employee of GRPS is, is, is selling Parent University, we have other parents on the ground going to neighborhoods talking about Parent University and what's the benefits of it. So there's, so far, um, is, remember, we started October 2nd. There's been 35 trained parent, universe, parent ambassadors already um, that's, that's really recruiting other parents. So very exciting. All this, um, this launch, we, we initially be launched in um, August uh, um, of this year. The marketing was in September, and the classes began this October. And some of the materials that you should see um, around the community or at home um, is it, here's, you have at your, at your desk this parent university uh, manual right here. There's postcards. There's, there's billboards. So there, there's a whole, huge marketing launch. So anytime you see the child you know, with a, an adult holding the hand, you know, that's really talking about Parent University. Ways to re the ways to register. We can register um, either either the traditional way with a hard copy writing it down, or you can go to grparentuniversity.org. You know, we have partnered with um, all the, the the local news the news crews, the print media, and the, um, the, the news media. All the media is on board with it. 
Registration for the fall class is still open. The, the, first set, first set of, the first set of classes, we have three different tracks. We have a fall track, a winter track, and a spring track. And the, and the first set of classes go through December 12th. So you still have time to um, go to grpuniversity.org and, and register for a class now. The, the winter registration for the next set of classes, the manual highlighted some of them, will begin November 29th. Um, so we will have a new manual, um, a revised, um, our website will be updated again. Um, those classes will begin in January 2014. And what I wanted to do now is just show just, just a, a, a short, um, just part of a clip, uh, a minute and 30 seconds of, and this w was came from our um, parent university media launch. It was happened at um, GR Ford um, Academic Center. And it just highlights through um, superintendent's eyes and, and parents' eyes about what parent university really means. What we know is this. Parents are key levers in the children's academic system. The research is real clear. Parents are this is the first parent university in the state of Michigan. This is one of very few in the entire country. Um, this is one where classes are absolutely 100% free to our parents. And the parent university actually came out of the parent advocacy group. And that was the group where parents felt that parents needed to have tools, encouragement, skills, and knowledge, and creativity, and all the things they needed in order to help their children be successful. And we all believe that parents are confident advocates of our children's success. That is very important to us. It is very important for parents to know that. We want to partner with parents. We need parents to be involved. We need parents to be engaged. And that's what Parent University is about to do. They're starting a new school. This is a movement that will take place throughout the city of Grand Rapids. always appreciated parents who didn't know how to engage you. All we had to do was ask you, and you told us. So I want to stop there. The, and that, that's a, such, a, such a great point. We didn't know how to engage parents before, but we asked them. We asked them. And so far as, as of October 16th, we've had um, 200 and cor 280 course parent registrations. 280 um, parents have signed up for parent university. I mean, or 100, uh, 280 registrations. Some of them are signed up for more than one. And you can sign up for one, you can sign up for nine, you can sign up for two, you bring a friend. So there's been, let me say that again, 113 total parents with 280 courses um, already being signed up for. And it's, we, we're literally three weeks into it. And if I could highlight one thing, um, these classes are for any parents. You don't have to be a resident of GRPS. We have one parent that's um, signed up from a different city that has signed up for oh, nine courses. Yeah. So this is not okay. just for you know um, our parents. This is for our parents serving West Michigan. Social justice, lift yep. the whole yep. boat. Yep. Mm -hmm. yep. So, so in my office, I was seeing a patient a few. Mm -hmm. I think it was last week, and that we were talking about saying positive comments, encouraging is really good to get positive behaviors. And she said, you know, I know that Dr. Randall's from uh, preschool. They're teaching me there at uh, GRPS about That's right. And I was like, well, great, here you go. Just <laughs> keep implementing. <laughs> and, I, and that was a class that we taught last week, um, PBIS. And uh, one of the other philosophies that we have is we teach students a lot about our policies, procedures, PBIS, other mm -hmm. things, creating a college pipeline. But mm -hmm. when do we really get the chance to teach parents the same things that we're teaching children mm -hmm. um, during yeah. the day? I would like to add, David uh, Legrand. David is going Financial to teach. Literacy. That's He's right. On the radar. <laughs> He's going to teach. And if any of the other board members would like to teach any of the courses that uh, we offer, just let us know. Mm -hmm. Wendy wants to do the Zumba class. <laughs> <laughs> I signed up for Zumba. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe our next board retreat. <laughs> in our classes, we, we ask that people register, but we're open to walk-ins as well. We have a registration process if you choose to walk in. Powerful. Yeah, it's fantastic. Yeah. Good to have you guys. Thank you. Yeah, it's very impressive. I was at the kickoff a couple weeks ago. It was amazing how much, I mean, the, the curriculum is really sophisticated, but it's really nice to see how much community support there is, and it's just mm -hmm. like a real analysis of exactly what 
what we need to finish the work here. Mm -hmm. So yeah. it's great. Well, and I think we can feel a little proud of ourselves as a community because the trend lines have been going all the wrong way on, you know, adult education for years now, yeah. right, in, in <coughs> broader society. So it's kind of nice to be able to buck the trend in Grand Rapids. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. Thanks for your leadership. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Is that all? That's it. All Thank right. you. On to our action items. Uh, do I have a motion for approval of the purchasing agenda? So moved. Support? Support. Support. Any discussion? Seeing none, Ms. Slade, could you please call the vote? No. My name is First Slade. Yes. Dr. Baker. Yes. Mr. Legrand. Yes. Reverend Matias. Yes. Mr. O'Connor. Yes. Dr. Randalls. Yes. And President Fowler. Yes. Our next I action item is a contract ratification from the POLC. Do I have a motion for that? So moved. Support? Support. Any discussion? Just briefly for our viewers, the, um, this is the second phase of our uh, contract implementation um, to recap things. We, we uh, had a contract which we finally entered into with the bulk of our employees, but as any large organization, uh, this is often true for many large organizations, there are a number of subgroups, and so our contracts here largely track the terms that we uh, established in our earlier negotiations with other groups. And so um, this is wrapping up a process that took a long time, but I think went very well and, and very smoothly this year. And that's, you know, I'm, I'm very happy with, with how that all proceeded. And I think the, the public should be um, proud of all these union members for coming to the table and uh, getting this wrapped up so well. Thank you. Any further discussion? Seeing none, Ms. Slade. Up. Yes, Dr. Baker. Yes. Mr. Legrand? Yes. Reverend Matias? Yes. Mr. O'Connor? Yes. Dr. Randalls? Yes. President Fall? Yes. Seven yes. Thank you. And our next action item is a ratification of the GREOA contract. Uh, do I have a motion? So move. Support? Support. Support. Discussion? Please call the vote. Making it easy. Yes, Dr. Baker. Yes. Mr. Grand. Yes. Reverend Matias. Yes. Mr. O'Connor. Yes. Dr. Randalls. Yes. President Fox. Yes. Seven yes. I guess I want to express my appreciation to our bargaining team as well as those from the unions for completing this and um, doing a doing a good job. This is great. Good good contracts. All right. So next on the. Agenda for our action item is an adoption of our legislative platform. We spent quite a bit of time on our retreat this weekend, and um, it's coming before us for public formal adoption. Mm -hmm. Mr. Hemmel. Madam President, uh, Superintendent Neal, members of the board, I uh, did send an email uh, just, but I'll walk through the changes that we talked about on Saturday that we have been made to this final document. Um, one of the there's just ten simple changes, a few additions under the guiding principles. Uh, we added the ter under local control. We added local democratic control. I think there was consensus on using that, and making sure to establish that point. Um, under the after school, we wanted to add language about that we currently only serve 20% of eligible students. Uh, again, reinforcing that even the current after school funding is not enough to meet the needs, let alone the, the federal funding cuts that we've endured in the last couple of years. Third <coughs> item um, was to add asterisks uh, signifying our top legislative priorities. You'll see those are the sinking fund uh, expansion, restoration, preservation of the categorical funding uh, for through grant dollars, uh, MEEP testing date change, the retirement reform, uh, and, and early early childhood and common core. Those are the ones we put as kind of our top list. Uh, other items that were on the changes include under the itinerant funding. This was a question that came up that said, what if, um, what are we currently funded at? And it's a range because it's lapsed dollars and it's been as low as 80,000 and as much as 1.2 million. However, one of the other questions, and I got this answer 
between then and now. So the question was, if we were reimbursed at the full 28%, like all other ISDs are across the the, uh, the state, what would that be? And it would be over $4 million in consistent <laughs> annual funding that we would be receiving from the state. So yet another reason why we're going to maintain that as, a str as one of our key priorities of advocacy, whereas, you know, so we're providing the same level of service, if not better, and even more economical, yet we're somehow penalized because the ISD works with GRPS as opposed to the other ISDs across the state that just manage their special ed uh, center-based programs. Uh, another five-fifth was... Um, under the all-day kindergarten, there was that floating paragraph that wasn't supposed to be there. We deleted that. Uh, the last sentence under school board elections, there was another, an old language that was reflective of the previous year. We deleted that. Um, under the reform and timing, that's one of the last um, items that's on the list, uh, we wanted to add some examples of like race to the top. Uh, some of the mandates coming along with special uh, with teacher evaluations and how it doesn't line up with when we need to do teacher placement. And again, if our goal is to have a more smooth start of school, make it more predictable, stable, uh, reliable, there are a lot of these uh, these these mandates, these late last minute things that come down from the federal, the state government. We're saying the legislature, Congress needs to step back and look at that. We want to cite some examples. Um, under the food allergies, we did delete uh, the language that said preferably medical personnel and said it would be uh, for trained, uh, properly trained personnel. Uh, number nine, we did add um, under the no child left behind language specific about the reauthorization of the Elementary and Secondary Education Act along with bullet points that we use as part of our, our FRN advocacy at the national conference that many of us attend. Uh, those are specific bullet points that we use so it gives even a higher level of detail than we had before. And last but not least, uh, we added a whole new point around 21st century after school funding even though we had the one point under just general after school, we thought under federal issues it would make sense to be more specific about the 21st century fund and what that's currently used for, as well as showing how it has been cut from last year's federal budget to this year's. And that's it. Thank you, John. I have a question. Go ahead. No, go ahead, Mo. Um, my question is, is this, is it available somewhere so that people who are watching mm -hmm. us or any of our people yeah it will be see. yep okay. um, we put it it's right under the on the grps.org backslash communications and it's okay. right on the menu they can download the legislative platform along with a brochure of how to contact lawmakers if individuals are interested in uh, advocating directly to them so I think it's really important that that our parents and our, our, our community members know what we are suggesting and support us if, if they feel that they can and we hope that they would absolutely Dr. Randalls. I just wanted to clarify why we wanted that um, language change for the food allergies. Mm -hmm. Just so community members, uh, parents, parents struggle with this all the time. Who's going to give the EpiPen if somebody is having an anaphylactic reaction? And it should really be anyone. It's an easy um, shot to give. It's, an, it's a very scary shot. Nobody wants to do it, actually. Uh, and who wants to inject a child? So th it shouldn't be medical personnel because it should be anybody. Our parents expect to do that. Um, so it's going to require more PD, um, and so more staff feels comfortable doing it and recognizing symptoms. It's critical. Mm -hmm. I wasn't aware of the child that had passed away, mm -hmm. um, and uh, that's you know those are really that's that's mm -hmm. very scary. So we need to really make sure we have good PD for. Um, so taking away the medical personnel, we don't put it on just a nurse. And Dr. Reynolds, we've added that to our PD round. Mary mm -hmm. Jo has taken care of that since Friday. Yeah, that's great. Mr. Legrand. Um, first of all, thank you, uh, John. And I think uh, John Helmholt deserves, deserves a lot of credit for really keeping on top of this. And thank you. This is a very cohesive document and that's I think important and if anyone goes and looks at this online I mean, there's a clear overarching theme here which is that we are asking for what's reasonable 
and our legislative priorities are that we have fair funding for urban districts, if there's an overarching theme, mm -hmm. and that we have fair recognitions of the challenges that our students face, and that we uh, are given the tools to provide for those students and to educate those students. And I think all of our legislative priorities as summarized in this document really reflect that theme, and they reflect, frankly, a very deep level of engagement and consensus by the board members. I think that we're all very much um, of one mind about these things because these are priorities for the children in this district and every single thing we're asking for, the, the, the rubber meeting the road is it's gonna be something that's gonna benefit the children in this district and, and keep the playing field level for those children. And that's something that we will continue to struggle with and we have to continue to advocate for but so do our parents. And if I were gonna point out one thing to the population out there watching this, it's that we are still suffering under a huge cut from 2011, 2012 to the per pupil allowance. And uh, you know, it's one thing to talk about cutting things when times are tough, but the numbers, the economy is looking good all over the state and it is time for some of that money to come back to the classroom. It's definitely. Thank you. Other comments? Thank you, John. Thank sure. you for your work you. and your leadership. And I also want to thank the board for a very substantive discussion and mm -hmm. contributions to make Good. this a solid platform. Before you go, John, perhaps you should mention the legislative breakfast. We sure, we have a legislative uh, breakfast that's coming up on November 1st uh, that will be um, over at Gerald R. Ford Academic Center in the library. And it's not just limited to state lawmakers. We actually invite the local uh, city and county officials our federal representatives, uh, and, and several of our other partners who are involved, we want them to see this is a bigger issue than just the state legislative issues. Uh, we, we, we also want to send a message, and I think we've done so very effectively, with our state delegation that this is bigger than just GRPS. This community is aligning around this board, this superintendent, this district, and that our legislative platform has always reflected that. And I think they're going to continue to see that uh, more and more, and that's why we're, we're looking forward to a good, strong participation. Uh, this will be one of two events that we do every year. We do one in the fall, and we do another one during budget season where we have a little more focus on <laughs> just the dollars and cents. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Nice work, John. Thank you. Thanks. Questions? Do I have a motion for adoption of our legislative platform? So moved. Support. support. I'm support. sorry. Support was? David. Okay. Any further discussion? Could you please call the vote? Slate, yes. Dr. Baker? Yes. Mr. Legrand? Yes. Reverend Matias? Yes. Mr. O'Connor? Yes. Dr. Randall? Yes. President Fox? Yes. Thank you. Seven, Next on the agenda is our cons consent, consent agenda grouping. Do I have a motion for approval? So moved. Support? Support. Support. No. <laughs> Got that? Ms. Slade? I do. I'm, sure, I'm not sure whether I have two people down for support. Pick one. <laughs> when you're ready, I you heard can, David first. Uh, you can call the vote. Okay. Slade, yes. Dr. Baker? Yes. Mr. Legrand? Yes. Reverend Matias? Yes. Mr. O'Connor? Yes. Dr. Randalls? Yes. And President Paul? Yes. Again, seven yeas. Thank you. We have no discussion items. Uh, public comment? I have no cards. No cards. Uh, superintendent's comments. No comment. Board members' comments. Reverend Matias. No comment. Mr. Legrand. Um, just good to spend some time with the administration in the last couple days at our retreat, and um, spend time looking at how we do business, and affirmed my uh, impressions again of what a talented group we've got working with Teresa, and I don't mean to accept Teresa from that uh, from that list, um, but we've got a really great group of people working for uh, for the schools right now. Very impressed. Dr. Randalls. No comment. Mr. O'Connor. Slade. No comment. No, no comment. Well, none for me. Meeting adjourned. Yeah.